This video is going to give you three exercises that you can do in order, as well as one stretch that we can do on the end to help us combat some of the stresses and strains that start to build up as we spend longer and longer sitting down on a daily basis, particularly at the desk, on the computer. Even if it's on the sofa, the same principles will apply. I'm gonna cover each of the individual exercises first, as well as the benefits, why we're doing them, and then I'll kind of talk about how you might feed those into a routine at the end that you can do a couple of times in the week, maybe three, four, five times a week. You could do them daily as well, they're not too strenuous, but with all of these, I'll cover a simplistic version where appropriate, and then a little bit more of an advanced version for some of you who might have a little bit more capacity, if you will. So, first and foremost, we're gonna start with the postural engagement. We're on our chair, we're maybe sat like this for long periods. One of the big problems we have is when we are sat for extended periods, we round over. As we go through the aging process, we know many people that start to round over through that mid back and it creates trouble. We wanna keep that up and out as much as possible. So we're gonna do a simple postural engagement here. And all we do is we take a step back from our computer or whatever we're doing, put our things down and we start in the bad position. And then we are going to imagine there's a little hook on the front of our collar around about the bottom of the breastbone. And that's coming up towards the ceiling. And we're gonna pull that up and out. And as we do that movement, we're gonna bring our arms back. We hold that position there, head up, head over the shoulders, over the hips, and then we come back down. And then we go again, opening out, pinching the shoulder blades together, and then we come back down. And we're just gonna do 10 repetitions of this one here, like so, bringing the chest up and out, and then back down, bringing the chest up and out, and then back down. Our spine should be nice and still. We shouldn't be rounding the lower back excessively. As we come up into that upright position, our spine stays nice and straight, our chest pops out, and our arms open like so, and our head is over our shoulders. So three more repetitions, nice and slow. So from here, up and out, hold, and then back down, up and out, hold, and then back down, and then up and out, hold. So that's the first one we're doing, to just sort our posture out at the top. The next exercise we're going to do is thinking a little bit about the hip movement. Hip extension, so that is moving the hip backwards in the socket, is one of the movements that we lose first. And when we're sat in that sort of position for long periods of time, the hip is relatively decompressed and we find that we lose extension as the hip degenerates. But because we very infrequently bring the hip back into its extended position, we very rarely have the opportunity to realize that maybe there's some degenerative change happening there. So we want to keep that range of motion, motion rather than losing it. So this next one we can do on the floor, we can do it on the bed, or we can do a more advanced version on the side of the bed or the side of the sofa. So I'll demonstrate the bridge on the floor. And what we're doing here is we're activating some of the muscles. We'll do a, we'll do a stretch a little bit later that's gonna help on the other side of things, but I'll get to that when we get there. So we're lying on our back like so, knees bent, heels relatively close to your bum. Don't get too worried about how exactly close they are, but they want to be reasonably close. And then all we're doing is we're bracing our core, we're having our arms down like so, and we're just bringing ourselves up as high as we can. We should feel the buttocks, we should feel the back of the thighs engaging here to drive us up, and our hip socket is extending, so our thigh bone moving backwards. So now we should have a nice straight line from our knee all the way up into the middle part of the spine where the spine begins to bend. So that is the position that we're going to, and then we're just coming back down, and then we're coming back up as high as we can without arching our back terribly. We shouldn't be feeling this in our lower back. If we are, we're moving to our back instead of our hips, and that perhaps gives us a little bit of an insight into perhaps some issues that might be there with regards to the ability to extend the hip. We come down, and you can hold it for a few moments at the top if you want, and then down, and then up again. And we might do 10 repetitions of this one just like before. Now, you could do that on the bed, you could do it on the floor as well. You can always get some weight and pop some weight on your waist and do exactly the same thing for those of you that are a little bit more advanced. The next variation of this same exercise is to do the hip thruster on the side of the bed. And what we do here, this could be the bed or it could be the sofa in the lounge. We're in this position here, resting on our rib cage. So ladies, this is just above or at the level of the bra strap. Um, and all we're gonna do here is allow our bum to come down like so, and exactly the same movement. We're gonna drive up to the top, squeeze the buttocks, squeeze the hamstrings, and then come back down again. And then we're gonna come up to the top, 
and then back down again. Try to get a straight line from the knees to the middle of your torso. As we go to the top here, don't just get stuck here because then we're not fully extending our hips. And that's really the goal here is to open out the hips to keep the hips nice and healthy. If our hips stay nice and healthy, it's gonna have a knock-on positive effect on our lower back. And again, we could always put some weight on here and we can also switch over. For those of you that are really strong, you can start to do single leg variations as well. That's a nice way to build out. Just for a reminder, we've worked the posture and now we work on the hip extension with those exercises. And again, you can use weights or whatever you've got around the house to just make that exercise a little bit more challenging. The next one is the squat. And the reason we've got a squat in here is because you will be doing a squat every single day. And as we get older, the ability to get in and out of chairs is so very important and it tends to slip away from us with time. So if we learn to do a good squat, then we will be getting in and out of chairs correctly rather than the classic push ourselves out like so, which has all sorts of negative consequences over the long term. So when we're doing our squat, we're learning to do them correctly. We've got our knees going in the same direction as our toes. They're not rolling in or rolling out. We're going down nice and steady. We're keeping our back nice and neutral. And we might choose to go to the level of the chairs that we're most frequently using. So we're coming down to here and then back up again. Down to here and then back up again. Some of you might find that that is too difficult to begin with. And that raises another question of, well, maybe we're already going a little, a little bit of a way in the wrong direction. So we want to start building this up. So we might pop a cushion or two cushions on there. Something that allows us to do a squat to a depth that is safe with good technique. That is the most important starting point on all of these exercises. Granted, the seated exercise that we mentioned earlier, this one here, all of you will be able to do that reasonably well. But the last two that we've just discussed, some of those you might need to do easier variations to begin with and then build up from there. And that is entirely normal. Most important thing is you focus on good technique. If you're doing a squat and your knees are wobbling all over the place, then you really need to correct those knees, hold them steady and just go a little bit more shallow so that you're doing them safely. Don't try and get this perfect in the space of a day, a week or even a month. But if you get them good, you can then build up your range of motion, build up your depth of the squats or uh, power with the hip hinge, oh, sorry, with the hip thrust or the bridge over the course of the long term. The final one is a little stretch. Remember, we said earlier, we're in this L-shaped position for long periods of the day. Our hip flexors are gonna tighten up. We worked the activation muscles earlier with the bridge on the floor and with the squat to a degree. We're also gonna be working these muscles. Now we're gonna stretch out the one on the front and we can do this again two ways. Some of you will have sore knees, so you might wanna pop a cushion underneath the knee in this position and we go forwards for a lunge. We're not arching our back in any silly ways. We're keeping our spine neutral to feel on the front of the groin. You could take a slightly wider stance like so. So looking at that from the front, we could take a wider stance to make sure we're feeling it through the hips, but just play around with exactly how you want to do it so that you can feel the stretch on the front of the groin. The variation that works for a lot more people is a little bit more knee friendly is actually off the side of the bed, most commonly, where we put the back leg, the leg that we're stretching on the side of the bed. We might even have a chair handy to lean on here and we do exactly the same movement. This way, the, knee does, the front knee doesn't have to bend as much and there's not as much pressure on the back knee. We can then relax into the stretch. The stretch, you would hold that for 30 seconds on each side and then you can always repeat and go two times through. So just to recap the routine in its entirety, we have three strengthening exercises. The first one is going to be the chest pop or the posture activation. I'm going to do 10 reps of this here. The second one would be the bridge on the floor. Again, 10 reps of good form up and back down again, up and back down again. Then we have the squat. So pop yourself up nice and slowly and we have the squat for 10 reps. And then we might finish up with the hip flexor stretch for 30 seconds on the one side, 30 seconds on the other. You could go through that two or three times through. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, you can always throw in some resistances, some bands, some kettlebells, some dumbbells, even a carton of milk to just make it a little bit more challenging as you move forwards over the weeks, months, and years. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up.